HIF-1 helps cells survive when they don't have, when there's not oxygen around. Oxygen is very important for lots of different processes, and, and so there are many different responses that occur if a cell within the body is not getting enough oxygen. And so the um, postdoctoral fellow who was working on this project is an extremely talented guy. Just about everything he did in the three years he was here worked. Um, he was incredible. He was fabulous. So he had this stick, uh, this stack of these um, autoradiograms on his desk, which were all the um, experiments that didn't work. And so I was thumbing through these one day, um, looking at them, and I saw this one gel that had this faint, faint, faint little band on it. I said, "Did you see this? Did you see this?" Well, of course he hadn't because he was in the the failed experiments. But that was HIF one. And then when we discovered it, we were looking at a very very small problem, okay, and and then you know a, a, as we and many other people began to study it, it, it became obvious that it did many many important things um, in the body, um, and uh, so we're very fortunate that you know we made that discovery, but of course if we hadn't made it, someone else would have made it. Uh, as I said, we studied the the common diseases that are responsible for the you know most of the deaths in the United States, so cardiovascular disease and uh, cancer. And in heart disease, um, when there's coronary artery disease and a narrowing of one of the coronary arteries which supply blood to the heart, that heart tissue gets hypoxic. It doesn't have enough oxygen. Um, and in a young, healthy person, that generates the production of HIF-1, and um, HIF-1 then turns on the expression of genes that help the, the body make new blood vessels. And in older individuals or individuals with chronic diseases like diabetes, that pathway is blocked. And as a result, the tissue remains hypoxic. It doesn't get enough blood, and that can um, eventually lead to a heart attack where some of the heart muscle actually dies. So there, in that context, we want to turn HIF-1 on. We want to make it more active. Well. Cancers do the same thing. They grow and grow, and then they don't have enough blood supply, and they get very hypoxic. And so they make some of those same, they make HIF-1, and HIF-1 turns on the expression of these angiogenic growth factors that control blood vessel growth. And so in the cancer, we want to turn that system off and, and block um, blood vessel growth, block tumor growth. So what we think now is that HIF-1 is sort of a final common pathway. You have all these different tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes that get mutated. And one of the reasons that there's a selection for those mutations in the cancers is that there's increased HIF-1 activity. It's, um, it's been a, a really exciting, uh, it's an exciting journey. Um, and, and it remains exciting, as I said, because we, we never quite know where, where things lead. Um, and... Um, and for example, when we discover when we're doing cancer therapy that a drug that's used to treat heart disease inhibits HIF-1, then we have to say, well, wait a minute, what does that tell us about heart disease? And start studying that in a way that we weren't doing before. So, you know, there's all these surprises and, and new turns um, uh, in the road that uh, are always coming along. and, and just continue to make it, make the work really exciting.